would be to install Java 7 from Personal Package Archive, PPA, install 32-bit libraries needed for Android development tools, install the Eclipse ADT from Google, and verify operation by creating a simple Hello World program and running it on Android phone. And at the end of the video I have a demonstration that the uh, Android emulator does not work with VirtualBox Ubuntu 14.04. That means that Ubuntu 14.04 is running as a guest inside VirtualBox. You can use the rest of the guide for doing a hardware install if this is what you're interested in. Requirements 14.04 64-bit desktop with administrative privileges and internet connection. I just want to emphasize this. Warning, this video uses a virtual guest for demonstration purposes. A virtual guest will not run Android emulators inside VirtualBox. I personally would not use a virtual guest for Android development, but this video can serve as a guide to do the install on a hardware computer. And additional info is get the Android SDK, uh, setting up hardware devices from Android, Google. And then I've got another video that I've created, how to configure an Android device to run applications in Eclipse. And I've got a disclaimer, and while this video demonstration actually installed the software required to develop Android apps, and it works, but I can't fully verify that it'll work on all combinations of hardware and software out there. Okay, here is a version of Ubuntu 14.04 running inside of VirtualBox. Although it is a little bit buggy in VirtualBox, I'm still going to use it for this demonstration. The only thing that will not run is the Android emulator. I'll hook up an Android phone to run it directly from the Android development tools. So the first thing I'm going to do right here is install Java. Do a search for the terminal. There it is. And I'm going to lock it to the launcher. And the first thing I'm going to do is do a Java version, see if Java is installed. It can be found in the following packages. So Java is not on this computer. I thought I had uh, Java on an earlier version of 14.04, but it's obviously not on this version, which has all the latest updates installed. So I'm going to use a PPA. I believe it stands for Personal Package Archive. And of course, I'm going to have to use sudo. sudo add apt repository ppa colon web up the a team java of course you've got to enter your password enter for continue so once it's added, I've got to do a sudo app get update. And then I'll do a sudo apt get install Oracle Java. Seven installer if I can get everything spelled correctly here take out that dash this I found the easiest way to install uh, Java if you don't trust WebUpD 8 team then you're going to have to do it by hand and I've got a video on how to do that for Ubuntu 12.04, I believe. Accept the license terms. Come back when uh, everything is installed. Now one thing I want to point out here is that it's got the GRE 7 browser plugin installed. Let's go and make sure this is the apt get install 
default Java, Oracle Java 7 set default. And I believe this is a script that will download and set it as a default. Now if I want to go here to Java version and you'll see that Java version 1.7055, which at this time is the latest Java version, although this won't affect the Android setup. Let me open up web browser and I'll do an about plugins and right here the Java plugin and you'll see it's a Java 7 Oracle plugin. So everything seems to be set up for uh, Java. So the next step I'm going to be doing is install some 32-bit libraries and the reason for that is the Eclipse Android ADT Android Development Toolkit needs some 32-bit libraries on a 64-bit machine. Open up a terminal here and it's fairly simple sudo apt-get install lib32 std c++6 space lib32 z1 space lib32 z1 dash dev and say yes to this and that's done here I am at the developer.android.com ready to download Eclipse plus the ADT plugin scroll down here and the one I want is Linux 64-bit because I've got Ubuntu 14.04 64-bit computer set up as a virtual machine and I'm going to download it just click on it then ask that you read these terms and conditions. Click on it and then download the ADT bundle. If you want to open, and we're, I'm going to save the file. Click OK. And then it says about four minutes remaining, however fast the download speed is. I'll come back when this is fully downloaded. Once Eclipse with the ADT is fully downloaded, it is time to in install it. There it is in the downloads directory. So I'll just simply close that. Close this, go to my terminal. And the first thing I'll do is create a directory to install Eclipse with the ADT, so do not want to use sudo here because Eclipse and the ADT is going to install in your home folder or home directory. By installing it in your home folder or home directory, you eliminate a lot of problems with permissions as far as Eclipse is concerned. Though there are, though you can install it someplace else if you want and uh, get all the uh, permissions correct. As far as making a video and, and, and trying to answer everyone's question, it, it makes it a lot simpler to install it in the home directory. So I'm going to make a directory in the home directory called Android Tools. Do an ls, and there it is. Go to CD Downloads, do an ls. This is the file, the Android tools with Eclipse that was downloaded. It's a zip file, so I'm going to unzip it. And I'm going to use a dash D for change of directory, space, tilde, slash, Android tools. Once it's installed, back 
to my home directory ls and then cd into android tools to an ls and you'll notice that's the ADT bundle cd go to that directory do an ls and you'll see it's got the software development kit and the uh, Eclipse. So I'm going to start Eclipse. And by doing that, it's Eclipse because that's a directory. And then it's located, the file name is Eclipse. And up comes Android Developer Tools. Those tools are in Eclipse. And ask for select a workspace. You should make your own workspace. I'm going to use the default simply because that makes the video easier to present. Click OK. And here we go with the Java ADT. And send usage statistics to Google. I'm just going to click No. And Finish. So I'm going to click on New Android Application. And I'm going to call it Hello Andy Andy Dandy World and it fills everything in for me and I'm going to click next. I've had a problem sometimes where Ubuntu 14.04 would not highlight this next. Go ahead and click it anyway. I think it's just the graphics is just coming in a little bit slow. So I'm going to click next and I'm going to take off the create custom light launcher icon because that's just some extra weight. Click next. Make sure it's a blank activity. Click next. And then finally click finish. And we're going to see this a lot of this loading. And you have to wait for this to completely load otherwise you may have that R problem where it can't find that R variable. And you see it's got these question marks here. Just let it keep lo loading. And sometimes there'll be these stars here. I'm sorry, the, the X is there saying. And then they'll refer to the R problem. But don't touch it until it's fully loaded. See, there's that little X there. We'll see if this one comes in with the little X. Well, this one, I suspect that if I reload, restart this, that this will go away. But let's go take a look and see what these are. The container, Android, references non-existent library. Project cannot be built until path errors are resolved. So let's see if by restarting it these path errors can be resolved. So what I'm going to do here is actually go to File and do a restart. This time I'm going to go right here where it says Java ADT, right click it, lock it to the launcher. Now let it fully load. If you've been watching, you notice that the X disappeared up here. Here's a warning. I'm not going to worry about the warning. It's a problem just setting up the main uh, default program. I'm going to open it up. And I'm going to go to the resources. And I'm going to go to values. And I'm going to go to strings. And you know that even though I have 4 gigabyte of memory of RAM and 
two processors running on the virtual machine that this may not be a good way to do Android development by using a virtual machine. You can open up strings XML and I want to go to uh, basically the XML file. I want to change this right here to hello Andy Dandy world right click and save so now I'm going to run it now one thing I don't seem to be able to do is run Android inside a virtual machine so basically I'm going to go run as and so I'm going to hook up a phone to the virtual machine give that a second to show up go to devices here USB devices Motorola double check devices it's checked and here it comes and I've got a separate video that shows how to hook this up so that uh, Eclipse can see it and Shotwell here is coming up because it thinks I've got some pictures on my phone and right click and then I'm going to simply run it as an Android application We'll verify that everything is working okay. And right here it comes up with the phone. As far as setting up a phone, like I said, I've got a separate video. The, the links are at the beginning of this video and the link is also in the description. Click OK. Uh, well, I'm going to monitor LogCat because you always like to monitor LogCat and take a look. That gives you a lot of good information about what's happening if a program's not working. I'm going to go to window and I'm going to open up the DDMS perspective. Take a look at my phone here. I'm going to do a uh, screen and I'll take another screenshot here. Well, let's close this one so that we can read it right side up. So there we go. Hello Andy Dandy World. So that's pretty much it for setting up Android development environment in Ubuntu 14.04. If this is all you want, you can go ahead and uh, exit the video now. The next section I'm going to basically try and create an emulator and kind of show you what happens and use a system monitor with it. So thank you if this is all you need. And if you want to stay for the next section, that's fine too. In this section of the video, I'm going to show you why trying to run an Android emulator is not a good idea for a virtual machine. Even though it runs slow on a hardware machine, it just is almost impossible to run on a virtual machine. So here's my Droibuntu, that uh, virtual machine I used to install and the Android development toolkit with the Eclipse on. I'm going to go to system here and I'm going to double the memory. 8192 and I'm going to add another processor. I added all four of my processors but I'm afraid of it crashing my host machine. I'm going to click OK. Then I'm going to start it. Once it's started I'll come back. Here I've got the Ubuntu 14.04 desktop started and one thing I'm going to look for here is the system monitor And I'm going to open it up and go to resources. And actually, as long as I'm here, why don't I lock it to the launcher? And so if you watch it here, you'll see that it's starting to use some system resources. I got three processors. Really not very much of that memory is being used. And I've got some network action going on. So now I'm going to start up Eclipse with Android development tools. Same one where I accept the default workspace. Move it out of the way of the uh, system monitor window. I 
actually make it smaller here so that both will show up. Just wait for it to fully load. If you look over here, you'll see that all three processors sometimes seem to be getting close to the top. Memory is no problem. Networking is no problem. And let me switch. Last time I was in the DDMS perspective. Let me switch to the Java perspective. And also in this time, kind of have to wait for everything completely loads up. Or you may wind up with some uh, error problems here in the star perspective. Okay, this looks like it's loaded up. If I come up here, don't have much uh, in the way of CPU usage. So what I'm going to do is... Uh, Go up here. Okay, let's go to the Android Virtual Device Manager and click on New. And I'm just going to do a test, call it test. If I say Nexus 7, let's just say Nexus 4. Target, skin. Skin with dynamic hardware controls. And I don't want to have it using the host GPU because the host is actually a virtual machine. So you're going to click OK. Highlight it and start it. Scale to real size and launch. Should be around somewhere. There it is all the way over here. I'm going to put it down underneath the uh, close this window. So now I'm going to go to run as and click on run configurations. And again uh, what I'm having here is I'm having uh, in Ubuntu 12 14.04 I'm having a lot of slow things happening here where the whole item doesn't show up click on target and I'm going to always prompt to pick device then click run and so that should run or attempt to run over here and I'm on pick emulator 5554 because it that's what it asked me to do and I'm going to go to open up a window console window here's my console window actually it opened by itself it says installation error. Unknown failure. Please check logcat output for more details. Launch cancel. Actually I've checked out logcat and basically that's not going to really tell you. You can take a look at it. It's not really going to tell you too much right now. If you notice up here we've got all kinds of uh, one of the CPUs is tapped out and they're going wild but nothing's happening over here so if I go to processes and I go to emulator 64 arm it's taken up 35 percent of my CPU it may not take up anything if 
I end the process, sometimes I'm going to, now, this is PID 2557, end the process. Sometimes it shuts off, sometimes it doesn't shut off. But either way, either way, you're just not going to have good luck trying to run an em emulator in a virtual box virtual machine. So thank you, and that's pretty much it for this video. Uh, at least you can, if you're using virtual machines, you can use a phone.